Well, I think uh, the easiest description of where we are uh, is simple. It's a mess. As uh, expected uh, for a long time, uh, the reality being that uh, Theresa May uh, has not succeeded in finding a solution uh, to a very simple equation, uh, which is how can uh, the United Kingdom exit the European Union as much as possible politically and as little as possible economically. Those are the two terms uh, that she needs to reconcile. And so far, so far, this hasn't been possible. And what we've seen in the vote on the Brexit deal, uh, which is on the table, which, by the way, is half of a Brexit deal, because it doesn't really say what will happen in the future, because most of what is about the future trade relation between the United Kingdom and EU remains uh, to be negotiated. What we've seen is that there's one third uh, of the uh, UK Parliament in favour of accepting this deal, one third against because it's going too far, and one third against because it's not, not going far enough, too far for Remainers, not far enough for Brexiters. And until and unless she can adjust these three thirds into some sort of compromise, and let me repeat once more that this is not a matter of negotiation between the EU and the United Kingdom. It's a matter of negotiation in the United Kingdom between the three camps. And as long as compromise is not there, the risk is that we run into this uh, famous cliff uh, with uh, no deal uh, on uh, the 29th of March, which, by the way, I don't think will happen. I think if there is some sort of agreement on something at the moment is that the no deal is not an option. Pascal, you've been in many negotiating situations along with uh, many former prime ministers of this country and the view from some of those prime ministers is that it's time to take this back to the people. That would mean revoking Article 50 and going back for a people's vote. Is that one scenario you think the UK should canvass at this point? Yes, I think uh, this is now an option. I would not have said that six months ago. I was among those who believe that the odds of a new referendum were extremely low. I think they are clearly higher now. Uh, but of course, uh, for such a scenario to appear, uh, there is one condition, which is that there has to be <laughs> a stop the clock between UK and EU. I mean, everybody knows, I think <laughs> everybody knows, that either organizing a second referendum or taking the time to reconcile uh, the various positions, which hasn't been done for the last two and a half years, is not going to be done in one week. So as far as I can see, and again, I'm not speaking on behalf of uh, anybody, I don't report to anybody, but my own sense of what it's worth is that the only new step forward now is stop the clock and take the time it takes to find a compromise which so far hasn't been on the table. And again, this is not an international negotiation. This is a national negotiation. And whether or not the U UK Prime Minister is able to find a way that leads to some sort of agreement where there will be a central position and where the two extremes, which so far as are equal, shrink. And this is a problem of domestic politics. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.